uh, in Maynard. And um, I just thought you were a really interesting, mature person that I just thought um, we all probably are not experts about the country of Belgium, and it might be interesting to hear what someone from Belgium thinks about Maynard, Iowa. So, <laughs> so I thought, um, to me, that would be really interesting. And Benny was really um, generous to say yes when we asked her if she would come and speak to us. So, um, Fanny Halu, is that called? Halu. Halu. Thank you. I, was, I knew I wasn't going to be right on, but it's uh, okay. Um, so, uh, Fanny has a lot to tell us about herself, her home country, and also her experience as a foreign exchange student here at West Central this year. And so, please join me in welcoming her to us. myself and my experience tonight as I am an exchange student in West Central during this school year. I apologize in advance for my accent. I am going to try my best and feel free to interrupt me if you have any questions. So, we are excited. <laughs> so, for the quick presentation about myself. I am born December 29, 2005, so I am 18. I come from Belgium. I have one older sister, her name is Leah. She is turning 23 on the 29th of this month. My dad was born in Seoul, South Korea. He was adopted when he was still a kid, so he hasn't any memories from there. My mom was born in Belgium, but her dad was born in Italy. For 13 years, I have lived in Roderville, a very nice town with a lake, a castle, and lots of nice forests. At home, we've always had a cat. Today, we have two cats, whose names are, are Grizzly and Tina. My hobbies are reading, baking, playing tennis, weightlifting, hanging out with my friends and family, and trying new food. I also love going to concerts and shopping when I have some free time. And my favorite, my favorite thing to do is traveling. So, here is a map from Belgium, for those who don't know where Belgium is. It is next to France, Germany, and the Netherlands. It is a very small country, even smaller than the state of Iowa, but still has 11.6 million of habitants. We speak three different languages in Belgium, French, Dutch, and German. I live right That's here true. in the French part, so I speak French, but I can also speak a little bit of German. I have the um, mind. Brussel, the capital is bilingual, so they speak Dutch and French. Brussel is called the capital of uh, Europe because it is where the European Union and NATO headquarters are located. Belgium is a monarchy with King Philip, and we also have the Prime Minister, who is the head of the federal government. In Belgium, I also live in the countryside, where there is a lot of farming, so I'm not that lost in Iowa. In Belgium, the most widespread type of farming is cattle breeding, followed by pork. We also grow a lot of potatoes, cereals, and fruits. I'm gonna show you some pictures of Belgium that you also can find in this little um, album that I made for Greg and Brenda and TJ. So this is Brussels. Here is Ken. Like you can see, yes, we get snow, but it's not definitely, it's, no, it's definitely not as cold as here. <laughs> <laughs> I would say Belgium is mostly known for chocolate, beer, and fries, because yes, even if you call them French fries, they actually come from Belgium. The city of Liège, located here at about 40 minute drive from my place is also very famous for its waffles. It's the best thing you can eat. I, but trust me, I, I, I write the recipe in this, but it won't be as good as, as if you were in Belgium. 
And I also, on the, in the little cookbook, put like tiramisu recipe or spaghetti alla bolognese for Greg because he loves to cook. And because my mom is Italian, so she gave me the recipe. Another very famous cookie in Belgium is the speculoos. I made, I made some if, if you want to try them. It's a cookie that we eat a lot for St. Nicolaus on December 6th. It has a lot of spices and is perfect for the holiday season. Saint Nicolas rewards children's good behavior with gifts mm -hmm. and sweets. I think this is the only holiday that we have in Belgium and that is not celebrated mm -hmm. in the US. Here I, uh, I got to celebrate Thanksgiving for the first time and we also don't celebrate the 4th of July. <laughs> <laughs> Belgium is also known for uh, the comic theater or Tintin. I also found uh, an English version. If anybody wants to read it, you can take it. Um, so, I said I lived in Robertville, but I born in a little, little city called Malmedy, where I did all of my school years and graduated. So yes, I already graduated, so you must be wondering, like everybody I've met here, why I'm doing a senior year again. So let me explain you from the beginning. <laughs> so, since I was a little girl, I always wanted to explore the world. In my head, it was planned that I wouldn't be living in Belgium for the rest of my life. The United States has always been my obvious choice probably because of all the movies that I've watched and also because I wanted to become a perfect, perfect bilingual in English. But what I also knew is that I wanted to become a surgeon. Since the surgeon studies take more than 10 years, I thought I should just do my studies in another country as they last for so long. I don't want to move in another country at 30 years old. So as you might understand, my first thought was to study medicine in the United States. So I first began to tell my parents about my project in middle school. At first they thought it was just another random idea of mine, but as I kept talking about it until my sophomore year, they understood that I really wanted to do it. Then we did some research and realized that the US University were way too expensive. We contacted an organization which specialized in exchange years, and they suggested the idea of a sudden senior year. A senior year in the USA is an equivalent to a senior year in Belgium. Therefore, I first graduated in Belgium and then came here. I had to submit my profile and document in September 2022. I also had to send my report out and take some tests in English so they could see my English level and another test with a psychologist. Not long after that, I was accepted to become an exchange student for the 2023-2024 school year. However, I didn't get my host family until mid-July and learned at that same moment where I was going and that I would have to leave on the 1st of August. That didn't give me a lot of time to say goodbye to my relatives, but those goodbyes weren't too hard because I wasn't even realizing that it was really happening. I began to realize that I was really gone for 10 months during August and September. Those months have been really difficult for me because I wasn't feeling good in my host family in Illinois. They had nine dogs and a very tiny house. I was sharing a little room with another exchange student and the house was, was never clean, with lots of dog poops and so on. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I ended up changing host family and that's how I came to Maynard. I'm really happy that Brenda and Greg chose to host me. Since then, I'm feeling good. I've met so many nice people, and I've done so many new things. I also had the chance to visit new places thanks to my host parents, like Des Moines, the Mall of America, Wisconsin Dells, and even Florida. I am very great, grateful for everything they do for me. Besides all the new places that I've seen, I also discovered lots of new food here. For me, traveling means trying new food, and I'm a food lover. I would say the bigger difference between Belgian food and American food 
is that there were most, more snacks of every kind here, <laughs> and people eat a lot more snacks too. We also eat earlier dinner here. I would say the typical dinner time is between 7 and 8, 7 and 8 p.m. in Belgium. Another difference is that the food is more fat and fried here. For example, you will talk about fried pickles to someone in Belgium, he will look at you with big eyes. <laughs> and there is also a lot of fat, fast food everywhere, and a lot of them don't even exist in my country. I don't have Chick-fil-A or Wendy's, Dairy Queen, Hardy's, and so on. But something I'm very glad for is that I ended up in Iowa because I love sweet corn. I also discovered meatloaf, which I like so much, and I think my best discovery is the cornbread. Overall, I love the food here, but I must say that I miss my mom's Italian food. There are some big differences between the US and my country, but those are also true for most of the European countries. The one that shocked everybody is that we can drink alcohol at 16 years old. And the other one is that we need to be 18 to get our driver license. The last big law difference is that guns aren't allowed if you are not a policeman or a hunter, for example. The difference between my country and the US that I noticed the most during my kind of experience is the school. First of all, we don't play sports in the school in Belgium. We have a PE class, but we don't have all the different sports like basketball, football, and so on with the school. If we want to play a sport, we need to sign up in a club. It's also very rare to find anybody playing football, softball, baseball, or golf, for example. These sports are more found in the US. The most common sport played in Europe is soccer, tennis, volleyball, and track and field. Another difference that I noticed is that school is easier over here than in Europe. The school in Europe is very strict. You don't even have any dances or any friendship with your teacher. Um, so we don't have any dance with the school. So I'm very excited for prom, which seems to be a very big thing in the US. I feel like in Europe, you go to school to study and that's it. Here, what I like is that the school is very friendly and the fact that West Central is a small community helps too. The people at the school became very important for me over the school year, and I already know that it's gonna be very hard to leave them. So as you may have guessed, I've never played basketball or softball before. But as I arrived in Vienna just before basketball season, I decided to take part in by being the girls' basketball manager. That allowed me to get to know them, and I made so many good memories during the basketball season. Going to the basketball games was so fun, I really enjoyed it. So when Brenda told me that she was going to, going to begin softball practice, I, I asked her to take part in them, even if I won't be here during the softball season during summer. Because it could allow me to spend more time with the girls and to discover a new sport. And I promised myself that to try as many new experiences as possible during this exchange year. Another huge difference is that here you go everywhere by car. In Europe, it's easier to travel because we have a lot of public transport. Moreover, Europe is smaller than the US, so you can only travel two hours by train to be in another country. Another difference is that people here are also more friendly. Like in Europe, it will never happen that someone stops you in the street to compliment your outfit. Or the waiters rarely present themselves in the restaurant. There are some details like this that I've noticed and that I like very much about the American people. So my exchange year is going to be over after I graduate. This means May 19. That day is also going to be very exciting for me because in Belgium, graduation isn't really a big thing. You just receive your diploma. You don't have a graduation gown or anything. And I'm also going to have my graduation farewell, farewell party that day after the graduation, as I leave a few days after that. I took some of my invitation cards. Everybody is welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so that was all about me. Thank you so much for your attention. <laughs> advanced one
money, but um, would you be comfortable just to ask, if we ask questions? Yeah, of okay. course. So, yeah. Anybody who have any questions? I, would you just back up to, I thought that slide where you uh, superimposed the outline of the United States over Euro, it's really interesting. So, I think, yeah. didn't you say that Belgium is actually even smaller than just yeah. the state of Iowa? Yeah, it's here very small. Yeah, so he, that kind of, I think that's a neat illustration that you gave us to show us what the difference is between um, traveling to different countries within Europe as opposed to, you know, just how, yeah. big, how big the United States really is. Yeah. With the train, it's very easy to travel. Mm -hmm. So what were your, um, I'll start out by asking you, is most of what you um, thought you knew or knew about the United States from movies? You mentioned that. I think so, yeah. Yeah, I, because I didn't really know how it was in the reality, but I wasn't expecting to live like in a movie, but everything I knew about it was from the movie here. Yeah. What was the biggest uh, surprise here versus what you anticipated? Oh. <laughs> uh, From here, especially in Maynard? Or? Okay, <laughs> <laughs> um, like, I, I think, like, I wasn't anticipating a so small, like, town, obviously, but I, I like, just get to know it, and now I like it very much. But at first, it was kind of, like, scary to know that, I don't know. Like, the, there are not so many people of, from my age here, so I was scared to not well, have to. It was scary because there wasn't a train to go on and get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> what is your favorite uh, meal that Greg cooks? I think. I don't know, it's hard to choose. But yeah, when I first uh, heard about cornbread, I was like, what's that? Cornbread. But so there, there, there weren't any any sports in your school, but you have other things like uh, choirs and things like that. No, we don't have choirs. We don't have speech. We don't have any play. There is a theater like group like that they created that like five years ago, but that's all. Otherwise, we just go from eight uh, to five to school. But we have a break in the morning from 15 minutes and a break from one hour to lunch and for, for the lunch, and that's it. So, so have you traveled throughout most of Western Europe? Sorry? Have you traveled throughout most of Western Europe? Yes, I did. Like, my mom loves to travel, my dad loves to travel, so we always go with my sister and my mom. And every year we try to do a, a, a new country, so we went to Italy, Greece, um, we did Spain, Portugal,
So it's five years of medical school, six more years of seven for the surgery, surgery because I, I want to do surgery. And I know that in total it's 12 years. So you, you don't have a separate cut out to be able to into that? Yes, you don't have like college or community college or uh, directly go to university. What did what role does the the king did the monarchy play? Is, is it the ceremonial? <laughs> do you, are they very involved in things in the country? Not that much. It's one of the prime minister that they uh, or the like directly like you know from the Ukraine uh, war to the one that decide. I I don't even know what's the role of the king. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs>
three uh, national languages in Belgium? Yes. That are most people, at least bilingual, I do, or most people speak um, German, French, and what was the third? Dutch. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not that much. Like for, like for myself, I've never uh, had any Dutch classes, so I cannot even say one word of a language that is in my country. But like if, if I, I feel like everybody can speak a little bit of English. So if I meet someone for, that only speaks Dutch, I'm sure we can like understand each other with English, you know? Is there require, are uh, language classes required in school? Um, yes, but you can choose what language you want, but as we, I live like very near the German part. Most of the uh, students take the German classes, and then the English uh, language as a second language. How many languages do you speak? Uh, before I came, I was uh, very good in German, like better than in English. But now that I didn't practice for ten months my German, I feel like I forgot everything. But technically, I can speak French, German, and now English. Spanish? No. <laughs> I, I, I took some classes of Spanish when I was in Illinois, but otherwise my school didn't provide any. Oh, they did, but I didn't take it. <laughs> Did you know any other exchange students that came from your area? Yes, I did. Um, um, like from my organization, uh, I don't know any of them in Iowa, but a lot of them are like uh, Missouri, uh, Illinois. Some of them are in California, uh, but not from here. I don't know anybody. But uh, I was sharing my room with a Spanish exchange student that ended up changing her families too, and she is in Illinois still, but like uh, not at, in at the same place. So she had to change school too. Have you tried my speculos? Yes. Yes, they are good. <laughs> Thank you. Was it expensive to become an exchange student? Yes, it was because uh, I because I was uh, speaking um, a, a language, another language from my country, so like German. I could have a fin fin financial aid uh, by proving that I could talk German. They provide me. Uh, for uh, uh, an aid from 4,000 euros, and I think like the tour of my uh, exchange year was around uh, 15,000, and I had to pay like other stuff like my passport and my visa. So yeah, it was expensive. Don't remind me that. <laughs> <laughs> but it was worth it. Any other questions? I'm limping up to the front. I'm a, knee, I'm a month past my knee replacement now. So maybe some. Well, we just want to thank you so much for oh. coming. So you said you were interested in food and that you're learning about um, American cooking from your from your foster, not foster, oh my goodness, <laughs> <laughs> uh, host, dad. So, uh, these are two little cookbooks from, oh, them, from Maynard. So, thank you very much. Um, I think one of them is about 10 years old and one of them is just maybe oh, from the last couple of years. So I think Brenda some. has some that she showed me. I was like, that's so cool. Good. Really <laughs> good. <laughs> yeah, thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you. So, yeah, thank you very much.